Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanson. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 20th of July. Vikram Singh elected Sri Lanka's president. Protesters vow to fight on to change system. Cloudburst wreaks havoc in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Several structures washed away. And Pakistan's ruling alliance refuses to buckle under PTI pressure to hold early elections. And now for all the details. Sri Lanka's acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe won a vote in parliament on Wednesday to be the next president until 2024, taking over from former president Gotabaya Rajpaksa, who resigned after fleeing the country last week. While his supporters celebrated protesters demanding a system overhaul over the whole economic crisis vowed they will continue their agitation. Sri Lankan lawmakers voted acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe as the new president on Wednesday, hoping he would pull the country out of a crippling economic and political crisis. Days after, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled the island nation following a public uprising. Vikramasinghe garnered 134 votes in the 225-member parliament, despite public anger with the ruling elite. The other candidate in Wednesday's contest, ruling party lawmaker Dallas Alaha Peruma, received just 82 votes. A third candidate, Anura Kumara Desanayaka, got just three. Following his victory, 73-year-old Vikramasinghe, who has served as Prime Minister a record six times, said that Sri Lanka is in a very difficult situation and there are big challenges ahead. While Vikramasinghe's supporters celebrated with songs and dance, the parliament's selection of him as next president came as a deep disappointment for many protesters at the secretariat and adjoining protest camp in capital Colombo. They vowed to continue their protests until a complete system overhaul, blaming Vikramasinghe to be an ally of Rajapaksa family. We won't back down. We won't let this be. We won't settle for any less. Because at the same time, this is exactly what we're fighting for. We're fighting to not settle for any less, but and to not be comfortable in the uncomfortable, but fight for what we deserve. Neighbouring India said as a close friend it will continue to be supportive of the quest of the people of Sri Lanka for stability and economic recovery through democratic means. Shrinking foreign reserves have slashed imports of fuel, food and medicine in Sri Lanka. Headline inflation hit 54.6% last month and the central bank has warned that it could rise to 70% in coming months. On the third day of the monsoon session, lawmakers of India's opposition parties, including Congress on Wednesday, held a joint protest against rising inflation and the GST, goods and services tax rates, high on a number of essential commodities. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, Malikarjun Kharge and others were present during the protest in front of Mahatma Gandhi's statue in the parliament premises. The lawmakers raised slogans against Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government for increasing price of domestic LPG cylinders, GST on several food items like milk and curd. They demanded a rollback of the hike in GST rates on commodities. Later, parliament proceedings were disrupted several times after opposition parties protested in both houses of the parliament, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, to press for urgent discussions on issues like price rise, GST and the Agnipat scheme, the government's new military recruitment scheme. Both houses were later adjourned over opposition approval. 
Several structures, including a school, was washed away and many houses were damaged after a cloud burst wreak havoc in Doda town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday. Meanwhile, heavy spell of rainfall in capital New Delhi brought relief from scorching heat but led to water logging at many areas. A cloud burst wreaked havoc in Doda town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory triggering flash floods in the region in which a school and several other structures were washed away while many houses were damaged, officials said on Wednesday. Floodwaters inundated a tourism office as well. Doda's district commissioner Vikas Sharma said that no loss of life was however reported. Record-breaking rain in some regions with the onset of monsoon in the country has highlighted the challenges the country faces as it tries to adapt to climate change. Meanwhile, heavy rains that left national capital New Delhi on Wednesday brought respite from oppressive humidity and heat but led to traffic congestion and waterlogging at many places. The India Meteorological Department has predicted the city can expect mostly cloudy skies and light rain over the next three days. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's coalition government has rejected former Premier Imran Khan's call for early general elections, citing the country's fragile economic situation. The ruling alliance also vowed to explore all possible ways to save the post of Punjab chief minister held by Hamza Shahbaz, son of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, after the defeat in the Punjab by polls. Pakistan's nine-party ruling alliance has rejected ousted Premier Imran Khan's call for early general elections, refusing to buckle under his opposition PTI party's pressure citing the country's fragile economic situation. In a meeting on Tuesday following the crushing defeat in the Punjab by polls on Sunday, the coalition partners decided to put their weight behind Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif to explore all possible ways to save his son Hamza Shehbaz's office of the Punjab chief minister from the opposition PTI PMLQ candidate Chaudhary Parvez Ilahi in July 22 chief minister's election. The meeting came to conclusion that the Sheba Sharif-led government in the centre should complete its tenure for one major reason. It had taken harsh economic decisions and paid the price by facing defeat in the Punjab by polls. Senior PMLN leader Khawaja Saad Rafiq told a news conference. Vafaqi Qumat, inshallah, apni term puri karegi aur mulki behtari के लिए तमाम इकदामात बरूए कार लाएगी इस सिलसे में इबाम फैलाने से और शोषे छोड़ने से गुरेज किया जाना चाहिए PTI chairman Imran Khan has demanded free and fair general elections blaming he was ousted in April through a conspiracy by the US and leaders of the incumbent government his party leaders have termed the Punjab poll results as referendum for Khan's narrative against the government. Moving on, former Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir Raja Farooq Haider Khan has voiced concern over rising corruption and discrimination by the PTI-led government in the illegally occupied region. He blamed irregularities and said funds allocated to the poor are not being used for their welfare. Raja Farooq Haider Khan, former Prime Minister of Pakistan, administered Kashmir, has expressed anger over rising corruption, lawlessness and inflation in the illegally occupied region ruled by Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf government. Over the past few months, residents have held massive protests against power outages, black marketing and shortage of food supply in the region, but their voices remain unheard. Khan, a senior PMLN leader, said his government had passed a law to provide aid to widows and the poor people amid rising inflation, but the present PTI-led regime and its officials have kept all the money for themselves and are living a luxurious life while ignoring the marginalized. 
एक कानून पास किया कि जो बेवा है याद राशि का खातून जो गुरबत की सतह से नीचे है उसके भारत हुकूमत करेगी वो कानून भी बन गया उसके ऊपर वो कमेटी भी बन गई अब ये जो करोड़ रुपये की गाड़ियाँ जो नई गाड़ियाँ सब सब के पास है Locals have long blamed successive governments of ignoring their plight, while corruption and ignorance in the system have become major challenges for the growth of the illegally occupied region, leaving its future in dark. Finding water in arid Afghanistan is virtually always a challenge, but a drop in the groundwater level in capital Kabul caused by overuse and drought is making it even more difficult for residents, especially the poor. The Ministry of Energy and Water asked the private sector and aid agencies to help it as water shortage threatens Kabul city. Afghanistan's Ministry of Energy and Water has said that capital Kabul city is facing a water shortage crisis and the level of groundwater has dropped to 3.5 meters this year. The officials have asked the private sector and aid agencies to help the ministry in this regard, reports suggest. According to the ministry, the increase in population, high consumption of underground water and climate change are among the reasons that have made Kabul city face lower water levels now than ever before. Modern Kabul was originally planned to support about 1 million people but is now home to more than 4 million according to US government estimates with people fleeing violence and seeking jobs thronging into urban centers. Like Kabul, several other provinces are also facing water shortage crisis. In southern Kandahar province, three new dams are being built in an effort to ease an acute water shortage as a result of years of drought which has affected the local agricultural production. The new dams are located in the province's Shah Walikot and Spilboldak districts. Kandahar province is well known for its grapes and pomegranates, but their production has been badly affected by years of drought. The new three dams are being built on a river in the mountainous area other than the Argandhav River, from which the only reservoir, Dahla Dam, supply water to Kandahar, the largest city in Afghanistan south, fetches water. Dahla Dam has now little water and water level in the Argandav River has fallen and even cannot irrigate the farmland on its banks. Local service providers including pony riders and owners and palanquin bearers are instrumental in smooth running of annual pilgrimage, the Amarnath Yatra in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. With the pilgrimage to the Holy Cave Shrine underway, poly owners are happy as they are earning good money to support their livelihoods. With thousands of pilgrims making their way to the Amarnath Cave Shrine in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory dedicated to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, pony owners are jubilant to do good business during the month-long pilgrimage. Devout Hindus during the annual pilgrimage walk and proceed as stride ponies or in palanquins to the cave, situated at an altitude of 3,800 meters, to pray at an ice stalagmite, which they regard as symbol of Lord Shiva. Pony owners are ecstatic as they are earning good money to support their livelihoods during the Amarnath Yatra, which began after two-year hiatus due to the pandemic. Many were out of business during the COVID-19-induced lockdown. बहुत खुश है इस साल दो साल के बाद यहाँ पर यात्रा शुरू फिर हो गया है बहुत खुशी है हम इनको बहुत सेवा करते हैं इस साल कोई टेंशन नहीं है Pilgrims avail the services of ponies and palanquins during the pilgrimage as both routes leading to the shrine are very tough to tread as they fall in hilly terrains Devotees lauded the service providers for making the journey hassle free विश्वास नहीं हो रहा है यहाँ तक पहुँच गए हैं और सुविधा के मामले में तो यहाँ पर पूछिए ही मत क्योंकि हर तरह की सुविधा है घोड़े वाले हैं डोली वाले हैं किसी की कोई भी उम्र हो कोई भी उसकी हेल्थ के हिसाब से कोई भी वो हो लेकिन कोई दिक्कत नहीं है आराम से आप पहुँच सकते हैं दिस ईयर अमरनाथ यात्रा कमेंस ऑन जून थर्टी एंड विल कंक्लूड ऑन रक्षाबंधन हिंदू सिबलिंग फेस्टिवल इन ऑगस्ट वर्ल्ड वी है Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on twitter at asianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.